To appreciate the value and limitations of science, it's important to distinguish it from other ways of knowing. Science can answer the question, what is the most common favorite color in the world? Using research, scientists found that the answer is blue. We can share information about our preferences, but we can't share our personal experience of blueness. This question is better left to non-scientists, like artists and philosophers, who use different methods to ask questions. Pseudoscience, on the other hand, refers to findings that are packaged as science, but don't use scientific methods. Pseudoscience can spread harmful misinformation, so spotting it is an important job for a science consumer. There are many ways to define science. Wikipedia says it's a systematic discipline that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. This is very broad, especially with the emphasis on the universe, which seems more directly relevant to physics than other scientific disciplines. This definition doesn't give a good sense of how science is done. Keith Stanovich, in an interview about his book, How to Think Straight About Psychology, highlights three features of science, systematic empiricism, or making structured observations, examining solvable problems, those that can be answered with evidence, and creation of public knowledge. This definition is more focused on methods, which includes the communication aspect missing from the first definition. These definitions are quite different, and there are many others, but they all share an emphasis on a systematic, rule-based approach to ask testable questions by collecting data. Science is guided by theories which are themselves built upon existing knowledge, so objective, observable, and shareable evidence is the basis of science. If done carefully, findings should be reproducible by others who also follow systematic procedures. So why should we use the scientific approach to learn about the world? To quote astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. His point is that scientific findings are relevant to everyone. If you drop a ball, it would fall to the ground from the force of the Earth's gravity. This is the case whether or not you understand the concept of gravity or don't care about it at all. Technology allows us to see the invisible. Electricity, blood pressure, and microorganisms can't be detected with our limited senses. Unlike human brains, properly maintained machines don't let their moods affect performance. So measurements using special techniques reduces bias and enhances reliability of scientific findings. Of course, there are other ways to investigate the world. Non-science disciplines use different but valid approaches. Art uses creative methods to explore ideas, while history examines texts and artifacts to recreate the past. These disciplines provide valuable information about the world, but don't pretend to use scientific methods. So what is pseudoscience? Here are two examples. Astrology links astrological events to human personality traits, and graphology analyzes handwriting to predict personality and psychological states. But what makes these practices pseudoscience? What they share are claims that these practices are based in science, but they are not. This makes pseudoscience powerful because of the value society places on science, but also dangerous because advice is usually unsupported or just plain wrong. Let's compare. Science studies differ in their approaches to asking questions. Some are purely observational, some test hypotheses, and others search for mathematical relationships. But what they all share is the emphasis on observable data to address theory-driven questions. Non-scientific research uses non-scientific methods to ask questions. Pseudoscience uses methods that are not scientific either because the methods are not stringent enough or no actual evidence has been collected, but claim to be based in science. Some examples of scientific disciplines are psychology, chemistry, and physics. Non-science includes history, philosophy, and theology, while psychics, astrology, and homeopathy are considered examples of pseudoscience. An example of a well-established scientific finding is that a specific genetic mutation causes Huntington's disease. A well-accepted finding from history is that the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand 
was one of the causes of World War I. Both of these findings are supported by mountains of evidence. According to some astrological belief systems, having Jupiter in one's zodiac sign is good luck, but there is no scientific evidence to back this up. So the distinction between science and pseudoscience is critically important, since most people are not scientists. So the distinction between science and pseudoscience is critically important, since most people are not scientists. So distinguishing between claims that are based in science and those that are not can be tricky. So how can you tell? First, scientific questions have to be falsifiable. In other words, there must exist the possibility of finding data to reject the theory being tested. So scientists design studies using a disconfirmational strategy. Pseudoscience typically doesn't consider data to refute findings, and so typically uses a confirmational strategy, considering evidence that supports the claim being made while dismissing evidence that does not agree. In terms of the type of evidence used, science is based upon careful, systematic observations, whereas pseudoscience is often based upon weak evidence like personal anecdotes and testimonials. In terms of where you can find science publications, they are mainly found in peer-reviewed journals, where rationale, methods, and results are scrutinized by other scientists in the same field. Pseudoscientific claims are not peer-reviewed and are usually found online, often with the intent on selling something. Well-accepted findings in science can be replicated, thus providing further support. If they cannot be replicated, then they are discarded. With most pseudoscientific claims, findings cannot be replicated when tested, yet supporters do not consider contradictory evidence. An important point to consider is that pseudoscience could easily become science if supporters were willing to rigorously test claims or be willing to consider results from tests done by others. There is no excuse for pseudoscience to exist at all, since scientific tools are available. Pseudoscientific claims and therapies can actually cause harm if people follow medical advice based on pseudoscience, so the distinction from science is an important one. Test yourself. How does science differ from pseudoscience? There are some advantages to using a careful, evidence-based approach since it aims to yield answers that are relevant to everyone. Scientific methods are careful, deliberate, and time-consuming, and if these features are missing from a proposed scientific claim, it's a red flag that it might be pseudoscience. 